Next, we will have a journal list. And so, um, so it, as we all know, journalists write stories for other people. And then now, he finally has his own story. So let's welcome him. Hi, everyone. So my name is Lynn, and I'm a journalist, but I'm not going to talk to you about writing today. What I'm going to talk to you about is climate change, which is an issue that I really care about. But to begin, I want to tell you a story about my friend TJ. All right? He's a friend from college. He moved in my hometown, Seattle, about two years ago. You'll see a picture of him in a second. But uh, he's, like many of us, he grew up in cities. He grew up, in fact, in two of the biggest cities in the world, in Shanghai and New York. And for his living, what he's doing is uh, designing, uh, he's in aerospace engineering, so he designs spacecraft, and that's the job that he took in Seattle. So being a good Seattleite, the first thing I asked him when he came to Seattle was, have you ever gone hiking? Because if any of you have been to Seattle, it's an incredibly beautiful place, environmentally friendly. And he told me, no, he's never done it in his life. So I took him to his first hike, which is about 20 miles outside of Seattle. Uh, in about 6.5 kilometers, you go up 960 meters up this mountain called Mount Sai. And then at the top, there's a scramble up a rocky uh, summit called the Haystack. And this is a picture of TJ at the top. We were both kind of out of shape, but the view was absolutely breathtaking. And then after that, something kind of changed within TJ. He kind of went all out and he started going hiking every single weekend. He started climbing mountains, going to mountain lakes, meeting llamas on the side of trails. And I, I didn't see him for a year. And then a year later, he all of a, a year later, he all of a sudden became environmental. He started walking to the grocery store. He's recycling most of his garbage. And now he tells me he wants to go to business school so that he can go into a career uh, with, uh, uh, selling things like renewable energy and electric cars. And so my experience with them gave me an insight about climate change. Why have we not got, gotten, had action on climate change quick enough? And I think it's because a lot of the impact on climate change we don't really see. We only read about it from very far off places, but make no mistake, the climate is changing. Uh, if, you, if you've seen any of the statistics, out of the last 130 years of average global temperatures, in the last 20 years, we've seen most of the warmest years. And so why haven't we felt that? Well, the reason we haven't felt that is because we live in climate-controlled environments. None of us grow our own food. So if something happens in weather, it doesn't really affect what we eat. And we don't live on an island that's going to be inundated by water if the sea levels rise. Instead, our lives are kind of as far removed from nature as possible. You know, we always want to be connected to technology and the web. Uh, when it's nice and sunny outside, we want to go shopping indoors. Uh, we eat more and more processed junk and less natural food. And, and so it's been really hard for climate change activists to try to reach us and tell us the impact. They've tried to scare us by telling us that our coffee might disappear uh, in about 40 years because weather has changed, but I don't think that's going to work. I think that kind of strategy, and I think the entire movement, rests on very shoddy foundations because you have to make people stakeholders of the environment and of nature. You have to take them out there and see what's, what's available and see how people have impacted the earth. You have to let them see how much a glacier has receded or an animal that's, just, or that's about to go extinct because of human interaction. And I think what's going on in the climate change community is that people are starting to realize this. They're starting to realize that going and showing up once a year to a UN climate change meeting and protesting might not be the best idea. What's better is every single fall, group, groups of people are getting together to do work, to plant trees, to rebuild habitats, to educate each other about living a more sustainable way. Because once you work on your friends, then you can actually go from the individual and build a community. And when you have a community, then you can finally change society. You have, if you have a community of supporters, you can pressure the world leaders to actually cut emissions with votes. You can pressure them to you know, do it soon rather than pushing it off five or 10 years later and actually act on the fact that our Earth is warming. So my message to you today is if you care about our Earth and you love the outdoors, seduce someone who doesn't. Take them out to, um, not in that way, but take them out <laughs> to nature. Seduce them with breathtaking views, fresh air, um, the amazing sounds that only nature can provide. 
Because if you turn them into a stakeholder, then they will be a voice, and soon you'll have many, many more voices crying for change. Thank you.